In lesson five, we had more vocabulary than we ever learned before. Now, in lesson six, we're going to set a new record. We're going to learn three entire new verbs. That's a lot. In the past, we spent an entire lesson on one verb shop at a time. Lesson two was ser, and lesson four was estar. But now we're going to cover ir, tener, and haber, including all of their essential conjugations. We'll also learn some things about ser that we haven't covered yet. Speaking of ser, we've talked about the location of this shop before. In Yol, Ser is very close to Joel's house. In fact, it's the first building Joel goes past every day when he leaves his house. But the very next building he goes by is across the street from Ser, and that's our first verb for lesson six. This shop is Ir, spelled I R. Now, Ir himself is an ear doctor. We're going to spend a lot of time at this shop in this lesson because ir is one of the most multi-purpose verbs in the Spanish language. Now the ir building kind of looks like a giant ear on its side. The doctor who works here is extremely eccentric, and he went overboard in his building design. It's not just the exterior that looks like an ear; the inside itself is designed to be like an inner ear. So kind of like with a human ear. Although it's easy to enter the front of the building, it's difficult to get further in and actually get to the doctor's office. He's designed a long, dark tunnel shaped like an ear canal, leading from the entrance to the office itself. Perhaps this is why Joel uses the word "ear" as his word for "to go." Personally, he never comes to this ear doctor to check his hearing. Instead, he treats it as a challenge. Can he go all the way from the entrance to the office? When Joel arrives at Ir today, he's prepared for this voyage, as he calls it. He's holding a cotton swab, which will serve as a walking stick, because he expects to make the journey on foot instead of flying. He assumes that a cotton swab walking stick is probably normal when making a journey through an ear canal. So when Joel arrives, he waves his walking stick and says, "I'm going on a voyage." But to say this, he says, "Voy on a voyage." So the word "voy" means "I go" or "I am going." The pandas, meanwhile, are not experienced travelers, so they arrive in a toy van. Their little toy legs won't take them very far, but perhaps these toy wheels will. To describe this situation, Joel says they're going in a van by saying "van" in a van. So "van" means they are going. The lizard, unlike the pandas, is very accustomed to voyages through caves. That's its natural habitat, so it's very experienced going long distances in dark tunnels. Joel isn't worried about the lizard because the lizard goes very far in such circumstances all the time. To say it goes very far, Joel says va very far. So the word va, kind of like far, is va for he goes or she goes. But Joel is a little confused that there's nobody here to receive them when they arrive. He calls down the long dark hallway, "Hey, some guests have arrived. Where are you?" Ir, the doctor, shouts back. Oh, okay.、Uh, I'm in my office, but I'll be there in a couple of seconds. Then, surprisingly, Ir does show up in a couple of seconds. Joel is shocked. Supposedly, this tunnel is a couple of kilometers long, so this doctor must be a very fast runner. You go very fast, he tells the doctor. But to say this, he says "vas" very fast. So, all in all, we have "voy" for "I go." Va for he, she, or it goes, van for they go, and vas for you go. Now, actually, if you simply remember voy and va, you should be able to remember all the rest of them simply based on the patterns that we've learned previously. The letter s is used to mean that we're talking to you, you go, or vas, and the letter n, of course, represents the pandas, they go, or van. 
Thinking logically, what do you think is the word for we go? It's simply vamos. So hopefully this pattern is very familiar to you by now. Joel's word, voy, is a bit different from everyone else's. He rarely follows the rules, but the others are predictable. Va, vas, van, and vamos. Actually, the word vamos is one of Joel's favorite words. He likes to boss people around, especially his friends. The word vamos doesn't just mean we're going, he uses it to mean let's go. So Joel enjoys dragging his friends around wherever he personally wants to go. Vamos, we're going. Vamos, let's go. Now, why did I say that vamos means we're going? Shouldn't it mean we go? Well, the present tense of Spanish verbs aren't 100% equivalent with English. Words such as voy and vamos are used very broadly in Spanish. So voy can be translated as either I go or I am going. And va can mean he goes or he is going. Actually, the implications of this extend beyond the present moment. With Spanish action verbs such as this one, you can sometimes use the present to indicate that something's going to happen in the future. It's kind of like English. If I tell you, I'm going to the party tonight, I'm technically referring to the future, tonight, not right now, even though I'm using the present tense, I'm going. So, for example, to say, I also am going to your house, I might be referring to the future. Now, this sentence would be, Yo también voy a tu casa. Yo también voy a tu casa. Before we go on, there's also an interesting idiom with ir involving the word por. When you combine these two words, it seems to indicate something about picking someone up or getting something. For example, although voy por él literally sounds like I'm going by him, this is idiomatically used to mean I'm picking him up. So I'm picking him up would be voy por él. Voy por él. I'm picking them up would be voy por ellos. And they're picking us up would be van por nosotros. In each case, make sure to use the prepositional pronouns that we learned when Joel was hallucinating about that pot of tea as the shepherd's face. For example, I'm picking you up would be voy por ti, and you're picking me up would be vas por mí. Now, Joel is impatient to start this journey. Holding his cotton swab in his hand, Joel flies down to the ground in order to start his walking voyage. But then, suddenly everything goes dark and blurry for a moment. He opens his eyes and glances down at the floor, and he's shocked to see his own reflection looking back up at him. Where did this puddle of water on the floor come from? When he sees that everyone is looking at him, he doesn't know what to do. Did he just go himself? How humiliating! Joel hates being shamed in front of other people in public, so he shouts out, I'm leaving. But to say this, he actually ends up saying, me voy, which literally means I'm going myself. Me voy. When Joel shouts this, his words echo slowly. Me voy, me voy. Something weird is going on. He looks around, confused, and then notices that the lizard has a puddle under itself, too. Joel asks, is he leaving? By saying, Se va? Suddenly, Joel wonders if he's dreaming. But that's not exactly what's happening. Actually, he's accidentally fallen into an alternate reality where everyone uses the reflexive versions of ir. That means that we have to use the reflexive pronouns which we learned in the countryside at the stream. So instead of saying voy, Joel says, me voy. He would also say, se va, se van, te vas, and nos vamos. In this alternate reality, ir doesn't mean to go. Instead, it means to leave. 
So the word voy normally means I go or I'm going. But when it's used reflexively in this alternate reality, as in me voy, it takes on an alternate meaning. Instead of I'm going, it means I'm leaving. So why does ir's meaning change from go to leave? Well, this is actually something that happens a lot with Spanish verbs. They have alternate realities. The normal verb means one thing, but the reflexive version with me, se, te, and nos means something completely different. So when Joel goes, he says voy. But when he goes himself, that's me voy, and it's translated to mean I'm leaving. Perhaps leaving is what you would expect to do if you were to go yourself in public. So here's a sentence example. All right, I'm leaving. Bueno, me voy. Bueno, me voy. We could change this to, all right, we're leaving, as, bueno, nos vamos. This is probably what Joel says when he and his friends jump back through the puddle into the normal reality of the ear shop. Now Joel is very impatient to be led down the dark hallway, which is the reason he came here. The doctor, Ir, is supposed to take them, but instead Ir says something about gloves and runs into the closet. Now, wait a second, you might say, where did this closet come from? Ser and Estar didn't have a closet. Well, yeah, but Ir works a bit differently from other stores. I mean, Ir isn't exactly a store, it's a doctor's office, so there's no merchandise. So basically what we're doing here is, instead of red shelves of stuff to buy, Ir has a red closet where he keeps his doctorish stuff. Also, remember that in Ser and Estar, we mostly focused on the general imperfect past tense, which was behind the counter. For a lot of verbs, the imperfect tense is going to serve you very well. But for Ir, the more common past tense is the preterite tense, which we're storing in the closet. The preterite tense is more common because to go is an action verb. So if you think about it, normally to be, as in ser and estar, isn't a one-time action that you do. It's just something that happened to be in the general past. For example, he was a kid is not really an action. It's just how things were. But to go is an action. For example, he went home. That's a one-time event, typically, so you're going to use the preterite tense most of the time. So the point is, you're generally going to use the behind-the-counter tense for ser and estar, but for ir, you're probably going to use the preterite or closet tense. Now, when the doctor goes to the closet, this makes Joel angry. He watches as the doctor plays with his gloves, counting the fingers and stretching the latex and generally wasting time. Joel angrily tells the doctor, We want to go down the hall, but you went into the closet to waste time. Now, since he's thinking about the word waste, to say you went into the closet, he uses the word fuiste, which almost sounds like waste, but with an F at the beginning. Fuiste. Fuiste means you went. But then Joel sees the lizard in the closet standing on a scale and weighing itself. Joel points out, he went to the closet too. Since he's thinking about the word weigh, because the lizard is weighing itself, Joel creates the word fue, which means he, she, or it went. So, for example, you went to the house would be fuiste a la casa. And he went to the house or she went to the house would be fue a la casa. To Joel's dismay, he sees the pandas enter the closet as well. They pick up the latex gloves and try to put them on, but they don't fit their hands very well. Stuffed pandas don't have fingers, so the ends of the gloves dangle down awkwardly. Joel says, they went to the closet too to try to wear those gloves. Now thinking about the word wear, Joel produces the word fueron, meaning they went. So make sure that you can recall the stressed syllables of these words when you think of the different characters. For you, that's the doctor, so that's the waste of time, and that's fuiste. For the lizard, that's he or she. 
This would be we or fue. For the pandas, they're trying to wear the gloves, so that's fueron. Each of these words starts with the letter F. All of a sudden, a loud, unexpected noise shakes the whole building. There's a loud ba sound, like a sheep. And the ear shop seems to turn sideways, throwing Joel into the closet with everybody else. Joel screams, Wee! at this unexpected occurrence. He doesn't know what's going on, but it seems to be exciting and enjoyable, which is an improvement over his formerly bored state of mind. When Joel lands in the closet, he observes, Hmm, I went into the closet too. To say this, thinking of the exclamation, We, he says, Fui, which means I went. Now looking around, it occurs to him that everyone has now gone into the closet. And to say we went, he uses the word fuimos, which is simply fui with mos at the end. Before we move forward, make sure that you can remember all of these new words when you think of Ir's closet or the red preterite tense. So I went is fui. He went or she went for the lizard is fue. You went for the doctor is fuiste. They went for the pandas is fueron. And we went is fuimos. I'll be the first to admit that these words are very complicated and strange. Don't blame me. I didn't make them up. Joel did. My recommendation is that you mainly focus on remembering the stressed syllable of each word. We for fui. We for fue. Waste for fuiste. Where for fueron, and we for fuimos. Remember those English words along with the characters for now, and this will serve you well for having a strong anchor that'll help you remember the rest of the word. Now, although Joel enjoyed being thrown into the closet, the ear doctor doesn't seem so amused. He looks timidly toward the dark hall, which is where the loud sound came from. Oh no, not again, he says. Joel doesn't know why the doctor is so scared. Come on, guys, let's go on our voyage, he says. But Joel's friends hesitate. If the ear doctor isn't willing to go, they'd rather stay behind. If you don't go down the hall with me, I'll go by myself, says Joel, picking up his walking stick and marching away toward the dark hall. As Joel disappears into the darkness, Joel's friends wait anxiously for a few minutes. A terrified scream breaks the silence. Eee! Joel comes flying back with a petrified look on his face. At that moment, a loud bah thunders behind him. After Joel gathers his breath, he explains the horrifying situation. He was going down the dark hall when suddenly an enormous sheep appeared, visible by the light of a torch that it was holding. The giant sheep tried to stomp on Joel, and he barely got away. Okay, so that's Joel's story. And to start this story, note that he said that he was going down the dark hall when this happened. When he starts his story, he says, I was going down the dark hall. And when he tries to say this, all he can think of are the loud shouts that you heard. E and ba. So he says, yo iba down the dark hall. So iba, spelled I-B-A, means I was going. This is the imperfect past tense. It's kind of like estaba for estar or era for ser. This word iba indicates a general situation in the past, not a particular event. Now, normally with ir, you'll use the F words from the red closet. But there are some situations in which you'll use IBA, especially when something was generally happening in the past rather than emphasizing a certain action. That's exactly how Joel just used it. First, he set the stage using the imperfect tense. I was going down the dark hall, or IBA down the dark hall. And then he described the actions that happened 
and he used the preterite tense for those things. So a real-life example might be, he was going down the street, and he got sick. The first verb for he was going down the street is just setting the scene. So you would say, iba down the street. But the second verb, he got sick, is an action that happened. Estuvo sick. So in that case, the ir verb is setting the scene, but the estar verb is doing the action. Normally, it's the other way around. For example, he was at home, and then he went to the store. That would be estaba en casa, setting the scene there, and then fue a the store. So that is the action that was performed on the stage that we set. Now, you don't have to worry about this too much for now. Just focus on remembering the F words in the closet, and then, of course, iba at the dark hall, which is our imperfect past tense. When Joel describes his story, the ear doctor is horrified. He says, it's my old enemy, the sheep. Oh no, he's brought a torch. The doctor goes into a panic. Joel looks around at his friends and tells them, all right, guys, we're leaving. Nos vamos. As they exit the store, Joel is still holding his cotton swab. The pandas look at it and they wonder if Joel plans to go hiking now. Joel says, no, he's too worn out from the encounter with the sheep. So he says, I'll go home. But before he does, he has a sudden urge to pull out his magic wand and shoot a ray of light at the front of the ear shop, exactly as he did at Estar. To say, I will go home, Joel says, iré a casa. So the stress syllable of the word iré is re, just like the word estaré, which means I will be. The future tense, as usual, is simply the infinitive with an extra stressed e at the end, creating the accented re. So we have iré. Meanwhile, the lizard says ra. So his word is ira, meaning he, she, or it will go. Once again, this fits the general pattern of será and estará, which should be very familiar to you by now. So that's the future tense, and it's the two most important conjugations. But then the pandas start sniffing the air. A very strange, smoky smell has invaded the scene. To investigate, all of Joel's friends walk around to Ir's backyard, which of course is where we'll learn the subjunctive. Sure enough, the strangely shaped back of the Ir building is on fire. The pink waxy material that composes the shop is simultaneously melting and burning, giving off a very uncomfortable odor. Evidently, the giant sheep that Joel found in the tunnel has set the whole building on fire. So when you think of Ir's backyard, the important word here is vaya. So this word sounds kind of like fire, but it's spelled V-A-Y-A. Joel hopes in this moment that he never goes to Ir again. He says, I hope that I don't go to the Ir doctor again. To say this, the sentence is, I hope que yo no vaya to the ear doctor again. He, of course, also hopes that the pandas don't do it. So he says, I hope que the pandas no vayan to the ear doctor again. And, of course, the second person is vayas. Joel shouts in the direction of the ear doctor, I hope that you leave yol. To say this, he says, que te vayas de yol. There's actually one more thing that's going to happen back here. Joel wants to leave this place before things get worse, but the lizard has disappeared. Where did the lizard go? He asks the pandas. I hope he didn't go in the fire. He's very sensitive to heat. The pandas reassure Joel, oh, he's in the storm shelter finding something to wear. 
So one of the regulations in Yol is that every business has to have an outdoor storm shelter, and those storm shelters need to have emergency equipment, such as fireproof clothing. So the pandas tell Joel, we told the lizard to go down there. He needs to wear something to protect himself. So remember the word wear. The word we're learning here is fuera, which is another subjunctive, but this one is in the past. So to say, we told him to go to the storm shelter, that's we told him that he go, or we told him que fuera to the storm shelter. So fuera means he go, or she go, or it go, but referring to past tense subjunctive situations. So if you want another example to make this make sense, Joel might tell the pandas, tell the lizard that he should go home. That would simply be, tell the lizard que vaya a casa. That's a normal subjunctive in the present tense. We're expressing an intention about what the lizard should do. But that sentence, tell the lizard que vaya a casa, could be put in the past. We told him that he should go home. We told him que fuera a casa. You might wonder whether this really happens very often. I mean, are you actually going to need the past tense subjunctive in conversation? Well, yes, because this word is also used in other ways that we'll see later in this lesson. For now, just remember that fuera, F-U-E-R-A, is another type of subjunctive mood, and it's located underground behind Ir's shop. Now, Dr. Ir suddenly emerges from the burning building. He's covered with melting wax, and he seems to be out of his mind. When he sees the pandas with Joel, he shouts to Joel, Why did you bring these animals to an ear doctor? What they need is a vet. In this situation, Joel really doesn't know how to respond. And the doctor continues, Get out of here and find a vet. To say get out of here or go away, the doctor says vete. The word vete means leave. So this is an order, and it's not very polite, although it is commonly used in informal situations, especially between parents and children, for example. Before Joel can respond to this vete, rudeness, the ear doctor kicks Joel onto a moving sidewalk that's on the side of his store, and he shouts, vete, and find a vet. Joel can't take this kind of treatment anymore. He shouts to his friends, let's get out of here. To say let's get out of here or let's leave, Joel uses the word vamonos. Now you'll notice that vamonos is a lot like vamos, which means let's go. The difference is that it's strangely merged with the word nos, which means ourselves. So this changes the meaning from let's go to let's leave. Incidentally, some people think that vamonos means let's go, but it doesn't. It means let's leave. Now, the reason is a bit complicated, but for now, just remember these two words are imperative, vete, leave, and vamonos, let's leave. These are orders or imperatives that have to do with leaving a place, and we think of them here on the moving sidewalk next to the store. So, as a sentence example, get out of here would be vete de aquí. Vete de aquí. As Joel leaves, he looks back to see what's become of Ir. He's surprised to see that the doctor is now standing on the roof of the store, eating some of the melted wax from the burning building. Joel calls back, why are you eating that nasty stuff? But all the doctor says is, it's not nasty, it's delicious. Want to try some? Joel concludes that the doctor is psychotic. He seems to be pretty far gone. Joel turns quickly to leave, shaking his head at the strange ear doctor that eats wax on his burning building's roof. The word here on ear's roof is ido, 
So the stressed syllable sounds kind of like eat. Ido is the participle meaning gone, as in you have gone, she has gone, or we have gone. So Joel might use this word to say, I have gone to the ear doctor once. I have ido to the ear doctor once. All in all, this voyage wasn't nearly as much of an exciting adventure as Joel wanted to have, so he decides to go down the road to a local toy store. Joel loves toys, and there may be a way to get some money out of the owner. But first, he has to wait for the lizard to catch up. The lizard is still underground in the storm shelter, uncovering a secret that connects Ir and Ser. <laughs> 